Hello! Today you guys are going to be learning about some watercolor techniques. We'll be exploring nine different ones. They're all super awesome and super cool. You're going to need a few things to get started. You'll need a paintbrush and a piece of paper that you'll both get from the sub. You'll need to make sure that you have a pencil out or a Sharpie. Pencil works just fine though. All right, now follow along now because I'm gonna show you how to fold some paper. All right, to begin, we are just going to fold our piece of paper. So go ahead and just fold it in half like a big card. Okay, then you are gonna go ahead and fold it in half again the other way. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just doing this to section it off. Then you are gonna go ahead and fold it again one more time. So it makes a little rectangle like this. Okay, so once you have that done, go ahead and just open it up. And you should have eight rectangles. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They don't need to be perfect, just as best you can. Okay? So now what you are going to do is you are going to label them. So this is how I would like you to label them. Just above the line here, go ahead and write wash. You do not need to make them as big as mine. I'm just kind of doing that so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, then next to wash, go ahead and write dry brush. It's okay for you guys to just write these with a pencil as well. Next to dry brush is value. Next to value is salt. Okay. Now going down here below wash is wet hyphen in wet, wet in wet. Next to that one is wax, resist. The next one is gradient. And then the last one is right here is saran wrap so saran wrap not like a rapper but a rapper that has songs but like the stuff you use in your kitchen okay now one more that we need to do is here in wash go ahead divide this box in half and above there go ahead and write rubbing alcohol. So go ahead, make sure that you have all eight, well there should be nine, all nine of these labeled and it looks like this. Now that we've got that out of the way, there's a couple other things that you're going to need. You need a paintbrush and a water cup. The substitute will be giving you a paintbrush. You need to make sure that you get a water cup from by the sink. Only fill it halfway. You really only need one water cup per table, so let's share those. But everybody will need their own paper towel as well. Each table will also need a container that's by the water cups. 
There's lots of stuff in there that you'll be needing today. The last thing you need is watercolor. If student can get their own watercolor tray, those are over by the pencil box with the feathers in the cupboard. By now, if you can't figure out where they are, read the cupboards. So this is what you need at your table. A set of watercolors, a water cup, a paper towel, a brush, and the container with all the stuff inside by the water cups. All right, let's go. All right, so now that you are ready to go, we are ready to get started with watercolor. So before you begin, each person will need, well, each table at least, um, needs a set of watercolor. There should be enough for more than one. Guys, we're just practicing today, so if there are colors mix, missing in some of these, it's not a big deal, they'll be okay. So we need a set of watercolor. You also need a water cup only fill it up about halfway. I know it's hard to see, but only fill it up about halfway um, so that we don't dump these over. And go ahead and then you only need one of these per table. You will also want a paper towel and the substitute will give you each a watercolor brush. All right, um, and then also in your table, there'll, some, there'll be some sort of container um, some of them might look like this, it might just be a little tub, but in here you will find um, a little container that looks like this. There's some liquid in it. This is, it says RA on it, and that stands for rubbing alcohol. You will use that when we are ready for it. You should also in here um, have a little piece of saran wrap. Now, they'll just be a big piece right now. Um, but just kind of split those up between you and your table. So then we should be ready to roll. So we are gonna go and head and get started. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit and we'll focus on just the ones we're working on right now. So before we begin, um, depending on what class period you're in here, these watercolors are dry or maybe they were being used last class period and they're a little bit moist, but we need to get them wet. So to do that, before we get started, you are simply just going to take your water cup and the colors you're going to be using, not necessarily all of the colors, like if you're not going to be using black today, don't put it in there. So you are going to just take your watercolor or your water and you are going to get all of the colors wet. Notice I am not touching the paint. I'm simply just kind of putting a little dot of water in there. Um, and we, it's a good thing to do this before we get started. That way the watercolor can get nice and soaked in there so that we are ready to roll, okay? So I'm just gonna put this off to the side here. So we're gonna skip around a little bit. There are two parts to this video. In one part of the video, you will see um, half of these. The other video, you will see the other one. So there might be some duplicate instructions, but you should all be okay here. So we are gonna go ahead and we are going to start with the first one, and that is going to be wash. A watercolor wash is probably the most basic one that you will do. So go ahead, watch me first, and then you will have time to do it yourself. Simply just pick a color. You don't necessarily have to use the color that I am using. I'm gonna go ahead and use kind of this red, violet, purple color. And a wash is simply just a solid color. So as you are doing this, um, just kind of work on painting in one direction. Um, just kind of a nice solid color there. Now, if it's too light, that means you have too much water and you need to let it soak a little bit. Okay, so now um, we won't finish this dry brush until later, but go ahead and we are going to paint, just use the same color, and go ahead and just up, up here at the top, go ahead and just do a dry brush, or excuse me, a wash up here. 
Make sure you have room on the bottom half here and we'll take a look at that later. Okay, so that one is pretty simple, okay? Now we're gonna skip around here and we are going to go to value, okay? So value, um, we should all know what that is because we just spent time with our watercolor paintings. You gotta have to watch carefully for this one. So value is when colors go from light to dark and we can do that with watercolor in a variety of ways. So I would use this space so that you can do a couple of these because it can be kind of hard the first time. So I'm gonna use kind of a darker color here so you guys can see it a little bit easier. I'm gonna use a blue. So as you go here, you're going to simply start with your color at the top, okay? Now, I want to pull this color down to make it lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush. And right here, notice I'm leaving a space. I'm just gonna paint with water, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start pulling that color down a little bit. And as it hits that area that I just painted with water, it's going to go a little bit from dark to light. Now, if you have too much water, this is what would happen. So let's say you tried that again, and you started with your blue, and then you rinsed out your brush, and just used the water. If you just went like this, it's just gonna all mix together instead of have a nice line like that. So try that a couple of times. It takes a little time to get that just right. So I'll do it over here again. So I've used a little bit of a darker color this time. Now this one is really watered down to start with, so I really have to be careful with my water. So then just start with the water here first. And then sometimes you might even let it dry for a minute or two before you do this, depending on how much water you have, but then it will just lightly kind of um, bleed down a little bit. So you gotta be careful with that one, okay? Um, now, the next one that we are going to do is we are gonna go ahead and move on to Saran Wrap. Now, this one's super easy. You won't actually see what it looks like until later um, because you have to give it some time to just set. So um, this one you might not actually see until the last half of class or until the end of, until tomorrow. So I'll just have you leave that there until tomorrow. So um, what you're going to do for Saran Wrap, it works best if you are using multiple colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of paint some blue in there and I'm going to go ahead and add some purple. So it works good if you kind of mix some colors together a little bit. And all you are simply going to do is you're gonna kind of crumple up your saran wrap a little bit here. And you are just going to place it on top. That is it. So once you have done that, just leave it and we will move on to the next one. You can, in the next part, in the next video that you guys will see, you'll see kind of what that effect looks like a little bit. So just leave it on there. If you pick it up too soon, it's not going to make that effect, okay? So the last one that we're gonna do in this half of the video, and then we'll continue on, is we are gonna come over here to rubbing alcohol, okay? So uh, rubbing alcohol is actually probably one of the coolest ones to do if you are using it correctly. So once again, I'll show you a couple of different things here. For this though, you will need your container um, of rubbing alcohol, okay? So as you go in and do this, you, doesn't matter, you can do a solid color. I'll show you two different options. I'm gonna go ahead and just use this green here. So I'm just gonna start by doing a plain wash down like this, okay? Now, 
when you are ready for this, and it works only when it's wet, I'm going to make sure to rinse out my brush. I'm actually gonna kind of squeeze out the extra water into my cup, or you can dry it off. Okay, and then you just lightly dip into the rubbing alcohol and just kind of make a dot and it kind of pushes it away. I don't necessarily want to paint with it, but if you kind of create these little pieces there, it kind of creates a pretty awesome texture, okay? Now this one's really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and switch colors here. This one looks really awesome once again if you use multiple colors. So I'm gonna start with the green here. and mix it with some blue. Okay, so now when I go in and do this, rinse out my brush, squeeze out the water. It will kind of push away and sometimes even mix some of those colors together. So if you do a line, like a stroke like that, it can work, you just have to be a little careful with what you use. So that one is pretty cool. Don't get carried away with it though, otherwise you'll cover up the entire area, okay?